introduce my friend. The, uh, we really want to embrace Ruckin's gift as a prophetic gift in our church. A uh, l- little bit out of the ordinary, which I like, but here's the thing about you have to understand is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, he says, He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And he said, why did he give them? He said, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. If the pastor could perfect you and bring you into perfection, then we wouldn't need these other four besides that. So we bring Ruckins in, and he can, so I consider a real prophetic gift in our church. And, and um, last night was just off the hook with you know, some of these people that are coming off of drugs and different things and pulling them out of the crowd. And it was just amazing tears and 100 people on their knees at the altar last night. And so... Uh, I just honor him as a gift, as a prophetic gift in our church. So let's give him a hand as he comes and uh, ministers to us this morning. So come on, brotherhood. Come on, man. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Well, you probably don't because this is uh, our our announcement. Ruckins and I are announcing tonight that we we may even do a little duet together tonight. Is that? Are you up for it? Are we gonna? Okay, we're gonna do it. All right. So we're gonna do a little singing to him and I are gonna do a little singing tonight. So.
left to die Rejected, often criticized Hid behind the childhood lies Everything has changed Since the blood Since the blood Since the blood
make a mistake, have a bad day, go back to bad habits that he freed you from, doing certain things that you know you shouldn't do, don't beat yourself up.
the Spirit of the Lord is moving and dealing with hearts. If you say, I need to get right with God this morning, there's some cold areas in my heart. There's some hard areas in my heart. There's some broken places, and I need to get right with God this morning, Ruckins. I want you to pray for me. I want you to jump up as fast as you can and hit this altar right now so we can pray. Don't delay. Don't waste time. Come right now so I can pray for you. You say, Ruckins, I want to get right with God. I need a fresh touch of God on my life right now. I need to rededicate, recommit. I need to get right. I need to get right. You are never... somebody in here saying right now in this section you're mad at God you're angry you feel like he let you down but God says if you will come up to this altar with the prophet right now he'll restore everything you lost he'll touch your family he'll touch your heart he'll touch everything about your life and I'm waiting for you right now wherever you are stand up I will meet you and walk with you to the altar I know I'm not missing God you're angry
as these that are here. There's no distance in the spirit. God is everywhere. He is the very breath that we breathe. Man cannot live without oxygen. Look at God like oxygen. He's everywhere, baby. He can touch you in that hospital. He can touch you right there in your car. He can touch you at Starbucks. He can touch you in your living room. Wherever you are right now, I'm telling you this is your moment of a divine change. And God's about to amaze you like he's never done before. Somebody give God a shout in this place right now.
God says every bridge that's been burned down, every relationship that has been torn apart, God says, I'm going to supernaturally bring it back together again. And God says, you will no longer look in the mirror and see the man of yesterday. You are going to see the son of today. For I call you son, says the Lord. I died for you. I adopted you. And everything about your life is about to change. For the Lord says, as you've responded to me, so I'm responding to you right now. And from this moment forth, I do a new thing in your heart, bringing change, bringing healing, bringing restoration. And my love for you will never leave right now, right now. Somebody give God a shout of praise for him. Come on.
those of you at the altar, look at the person next to you and tell them, you look a whole lot better than you did 10 minutes ago. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, you look a whole lot better than you did a while ago. Make your way, give somebody a high five and make your way back to your seats. Somebody give God a hand praise. Somebody give God a hand praise, a hand praise, and give him a shout like you are. That back row of young men, are you all related to each other? The back row, the very back, just friends? Mm, you and the red, have I ever prayed for you before? Have I ever prayed for you? I didn't think so. I'm seeing something in a vision over your head that I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about. And I want to pray for you. Is that all right? Would you come up? Come on. God is not going to allow that which has been on the me and men in your family to come upon you. And even as you were in your seat, you wanted me to pray for you. You asked, didn't you? What is your name? Brandon? Ruckus McKinley. Nice to meet you, my brother. reject people. I'm not going to walk away from those that love me, that need me. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to be the one that's going to be different. And God says that the words that were spoken into your hearts. scripture on you real quick. Mark chapter 2. We find the story of a man that was bound. He was paralyzed. He couldn't walk. He had never walked. Sometimes life has a way of paralyzing us. We can go through circumstances and situations that just hit us upside the head and we just freeze. We're just paralyzed. Can't move know how to get out of the situation but if we've got friends that care sometimes our friends can carry us to where Jesus is and get us to the place where we can walk again and this young man was broken he was bruised and his four friends took him to where Jesus was and Jesus was in the house and he was preaching and whenever Jesus starts preaching and whenever Jesus is in the house something happens there's no way Jesus can be in the house and some shaking ain't gonna go on so Jesus is preaching and all of a sudden the roof starts coming off. And Jesus is like, and they lower this dude that can't walk down at the feet of Jesus. Now how crazy is that? And Jesus looks at this dude that's never walked before. I'm sure the dude's embarrassed because he didn't know who Jesus was. Matter of fact, he didn't even want to be there. His friends went and got him and took him and put him there. He didn't even ask for it. But when you have two true friends, they love the good in you, the bad in you, and they refuse to let you stay the way you are. So he's there. And all of a 
sudden Jesus looks at him in Mark chapter 2 verse 5 and he says when Jesus saw their faith he said to the paralytic bring me up a little bit in the monitor here please my voice son your sins perfect are forgiven you your sins are forgiven you what does that have to do with him not being able to walk I mean you would have thought Jesus would have said rise up and walk you would have thought Jesus would have touched him and said be healed matter of fact maybe he would have did it like one of the famous evangelists we know on television take it my brother no pick him up no okay but no he didn't he said your sins are forgiven you take up your bed and walk watch this and some of the scribes were sitting and reasoning in their heart why does this man speak blasphemies like this who can forgive sins but God alone Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves. He said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. In other words, which one is easier? For me to say, pick up your bed and walk, or to forgive him of his sins. If I say, pick up your bed and walk, I'm only fixing a surface problem. He's going to get up and walk, but by the time he gets back to his car, he's going to forget everything that happened in the service and go right back to his old life. So Jesus deals with the issue, the sin, the sin that makes him feel separated from God, the sin that makes him feel unworthy, the sin that makes him feel like he can never be right, the sin of what people told him he could never be and what he would never do. And God, Jesus knows when I deal with the sin, I set you free from the root and everything about your life changes. 